Hello and welcome to a new Lua tutorial. Uh, in this episode I'm going to show you how you can set up your own parallaxing backgrounds. There will be less Lua in this episode than in the usual ones, but near the end I'm going to throw in a few things you can do beyond just generic parallaxing. So, the first thing you want to do is you want to get your graphics for the background. I have just three graphics here, uh, equating to three layers. And you want to make a new text file, call it background... Uh, something something dot ini. I'm using background 13, which is the Super Mario World Hills background, I believe, or the forest background. I will have to see. So in this file, this uh, looks pretty intimidating as it is. Uh, I'm going to quickly go over into the Dana templates and then the background to an ini file. So uh, this will give me like a background layer, a template for me to use. Now I'm going to go back into uh, the worlds folder and in here uh, we can then see what uh, kind of names we need for the images. So first of all, uh, there's a general section which uh, basically just lets you define a fill color. Fill color uh, can be white. I want to do something darker though, like um, it's all in hexadecimal. Let's uh, first go with black, see how that works. Maybe we can make it a little bit brighter in a minute. So uh, then we have the background layer. I'm, uh, you can give them uh, each names in their layer and a uh, more descriptive name for Lua later on. So this is like uh, BG layer 1 or rather if you want to be more descriptive tree uh, hills because I have hills in the background and then this is also uh, going to be named hills. The X coordinate and Y coordinate uh, is like an X and Y offset from uh, the anchor point. We have a depth, which is like how far it is into the background. Higher numbers means further into the background. Zero is you're uh, on the same playing field as the scene. I want something like 500, which is pretty far in the background and with pr pretty small scrolling. And negative numbers, of course, are in the foreground. Uh, then uh, there is fit X and fit Y, which makes it so that um, when you have a scrolling section, this will attempt to fit the background into the section so that you cannot like have it cut off at any point. And while I don't want to fit X for this uh, scenario, so I can just take this out, I can also take these out, I can uh, change fit Y to be true. So we have frames and frame speed. We can have animating ones, which are uh, laid out just like in a sprite sheet in some X for any other file where it's all vertical. Uh, uh, I don't have any frames. Uh, priority uh, is usually inferred from uh, depth, but you can also specify it yourself if you want something more in the foreground. Uh, minus 100 is the default. Um, and now we need the image. We just take the name of the image and put it right in there. We can change the opacity, which we don't want for this one, but which you might want for your own. Uh, feel free to experiment with these in your own time. Repeat X and Y. We want the uh, tree hills to repeat. Uh, there is margins. Uh, of course, to uh, have like a margin between the backgrounds. Can the, uh, have the alignment and change that. Usually it's like left and top, but I actually want it's left and bottom. So that it's um, bound to like the left end of the section as well as the bottom end of the section. We can change the speed of the background because of course we want to. I'm going to show you how, what that looks like, but uh, I won't be uh, keeping it around. Parallax X and Y is something that is inferred by depth, but if you want to override it, you can uh, specify it with these values. And pad X and Y is like space between looping segments. Hidden is false and debug is false. Uh, those are just uh, whether or not you want to hide the layer or uh, like have debug information shown. So uh, now we have the hills and I'm going to just copy this over twice. Uh, and make uh, the background trees. So uh, parallax width 1 and parallax width 2 and I'm gonna change the depth values for these to be like 350 and uh, 200 and I'm going to take their speed away because I don't want three ones uh, running around with speed. And uh, of course when you uh, then go into your level there will be no changes yet. Um, however I'm going to go to the Mario forest I believe it is and uh, start the level again. There we go. Uh, I actually had the name of the file run. Uh, I had the uh, back, it's say a, a background to 12, uh, to 13, and uh, I had say a background without the two. So uh, I changed that, and now as you can see, there is a, a beautiful parallaxing background, which <laughs> is doing some weird things at the moment. So what you can see here it is actually a fit Y, trying to fit the uh, image so that when I'm... Uh, hold on. 
when I'm uh, jumping up, that it like uh, at the very top the image aligns with the top, at the very bottom it aligns with the bottom. It tries to like match that with fit Y. That's what uh, that flag does, and uh, it kind of overrides the uh, parallax X and Y values a little bit. So uh, often you want to like remove that unless you uh, have like a background that spans the entire background intentionally and uh, as you can see in the background there is also the moving hills which is also something we might not actually want. Hooray. So now that that's taken care of as you can see a beautifully parallaxing background with uh, also working Y parallaxing. More things you can do with this is of course changing the Y values to make it like a little bit more in line. So if I change Y to uh, like 100 down here and Y to uh, like 50 up here, then you will get different uh, results. Like right now they uh, sunk both of them, so uh, if you also use uh, minus 50 and minus 100 to get them uh, further up, you can uh, get like a more inline uh, thing, but it comes at a cost because uh, this image doesn't extend further down than like uh, these 100 pixels that, that it was pushed up now. So it might look beautiful here with only like 4 pixels cut off, but of course over here it looks kind of odd, uh, so the ground would of course never want to be lower than that if you were to use it like this. So <clears throat> that's beautiful. Uh, a beautiful background. You can use this uh, layer technique and the ones which I just edited out in order to make uh, beautiful parallaxing backgrounds of uh, all shapes and sizes. But uh, one thing I want to uh, quickly show is that you can also um, manipulate these backgrounds through Lua. I actually have a little bit of Lua code written up here, which just loads the parallax library, uh, which contains our code for the backgrounds which we have written here. Uh, and I made a scroll background variable which uh, in onload section I fill with uh, the parallax layer information that we just loaded. So there, uh, there will be the scroll background and if we have one uh, I can loop over the individual layers of that. So for example I can check if v.name is hills, which I uh, specified earlier, then v.speed y is math.sin sine wave Luna time dot tick times 0.01. You have like times 50. What this will do is it will bring some sort of oscillation into like the hill background. So you can see very far away, he just kind of went away. Uh, you can actually uh, change all different uh, values here. For example, you can set the hills to hidden. Uh, you can uh, change like the parallaxing values to like have runtime alterations to your background uh, depending on maybe an environmental effect in your level. For example, like if something exploded in the background, you can have like the castle getting slowly destroyed and crumbling down in the background, which will be a really cool effect. Uh, and uh, further shenanigans like that, uh, which is just something if you're like brave enough to uh, put yourself into Lua. So I hope you learned something today and I'll see you next time.